I'm Edwin Rutsch, founding director of the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy. And I've been working for many years on researching, using, and developing practices that build a more empathic society and world. I'd like to uh, welcome you to this short presentation on how to take part in a basic empathy circle. I'm excited to share this practice because I find it to be the most effective gateway or first step practice for building empathic skills and way of being. I firmly believe that if the practice is widely adopted, it can contribute to greater well-being for all people and for the planet. So what is an empathy circle? Uh, an empathy circle is a structured dialogue process that supports constructive dialogue in small groups. And the process increases mutual understanding, connection, and trust. Uh, between participants by ensuring that each person feels fully heard, seen, and understood to their satisfaction. Uh, the practice is based on mutual empathic listening, which is also called active listening, deep listening, or reflective listening. So why might you want to participate? Here is a list of some of the many benefits of taking part in an empathy circle. So one, it is an easy practice to learn and host. Uh, two, it develops active listening skills. Uh, I find it's the uh, best practice for that. Uh, three, each participant is seen, heard, and understood to their satisfaction. Uh, the more silent people in the group get an equal chance to be heard. Four, it builds trust. When people know they will be heard, that really builds trust. Five, uh, it supports uh, team building. Six, it helps uh, bridge personal, social, and political divides. Seven, it heads off conflicts before they happen. Eight, it helps resolve existing conflicts. You can bring a conflict into an empathy circle and it is amazing to see how it can be unraveled and resolved. Nine, it offers emotional support and healing. Uh, this is a practice is at the core of emotional healing professions. And finally, 10, it is a foundation for other community building uh, practices. So next, let's look at uh, the step-by-step, -step, how to take part. Uh, an empathy star circle starts with two to seven participants. Here on the screen, we have four participants, which I find is an ideal number. There are four basic roles, and the roles rotate among the participants as the empathy circle unfolds. One, the speaker, is the first person to speak. Two is the uh, active listener who actively listens to the speaker. There's the silent listeners. They quietly observe and witness. And the facilitator who organizes, schedules, and hosts the circle. Uh, they also do the timekeeping, and they have some experience with the process and help keep participants in the process. However, everyone has the responsibility to hold the, the, the process and the practice. So to begin with, the facilitator will start the empathy circle. They welcome the participants. Uh, they uh, lead introductions if the participants don't know each other. The, the uh, facilitator, facilitator invites participants to give short introductions, for example, their name, where they're from, and something personal about themselves. Uh, the facilitator then reviews the empathy circle process to remind everyone uh, how it works. They announce the discussion topic, if there is one. Even if there is a topic, you can always talk about what is alive for you. That is, what is on your mind in the moment. And five, uh, you can they set the speaker time limits perhaps uh, five minutes for example and the facilitator then asks who would like to start the 
to be the first speaker. So at that point, the participant volunteers to be the first speaker. As speaker, you select who you will, who will be your active listener, and you can select anyone that you want. Uh, you speak about the topic given or whatever is alive for you, and so you'll speak a bit until you have maybe expressed an idea or two, and then you want to pause to give the active listener a chance to recap what they understand uh, that you are saying and feeling. Uh, if you say too much, the listener may have difficulty in reflecting it. As the active listener, you are listening to the speaker to get an understanding of what they are saying and what is important to them. You are giving them your full attention as a supportive companion on their inner journey and exploration. Uh, when the speaker pauses, uh, you recap your understanding of what they said and how they feel by reflecting the essence of that in your own words. Uh, you can summarize, paraphrase, or even say the speaker's words back to them. Even though you may have a strong impulse to respond with your own ideas, judgments, analysis, advice, and sympathy, or, or even questions, you know, resist the impulse to do so uh, because uh, uh, these common responses block the speaker from moving along their internal journey. You will be able to say whatever you want when it is your turn to be the speaker. Uh, just do your best. If you don't uh, reflect, the under to the, reflect the understanding to the speaker's satisfaction, you can always, uh, they can always say it again. Then as speaker, you check. Do you feel understood to your satisfaction? If you do not feel understood, you can say it again, perhaps in different words. Uh, if you do feel understood, continue sharing. Again, after speaking a bit, pause to give your active listener a chance to recap their understanding of what you said. As the active listener, you again share your understanding of what the speaker said and meant. The cycle of speaking and reflecting continues until you as the speaker do not have anything else you'd like to say or until you get a signal from the timekeeper. Uh, if you get a signal from the timekeeper, then finish up what you're saying in a sentence or two. After you get a final reflection, you can end your turn by saying something like, I feel fully heard or something like that to indicate you are done with your speaking turn. At that point, the roles uh, then rotate. The active listener becomes the speaker. The person they select becomes the new active listener. For everyone having equal time, it is good to select someone that hasn't spoken lately, but it is your choice. The others in the circle become the silent listeners. This process of turn taking turns in speaking and active listening continues for whatever time is allotted for the empathy circle. Uh, for fostering deeper dialogues, you know, I find two hours is a good amount of time. And this was uh, just a very short introduction. The best way to learn the practice is just by doing, taking part and doing it. Uh, there is more in-depth material on taking part in an empathy circle and facilitating one at empathycircle.com. I look forward to seeing you in the circle and thank you for listening.